sorry. I didn't notice you were here already. I know you were looking for a fun look to wear to conventions, so if you're ready to begin, I'll show you how to get this android look inspired by Chloe's smoky eye and one of Kara's endings in Stormy Night. Let's see what decisions you make today. Just remember, the lives of these androids are in your hands. Hi guys, Ari here. Today we're going to start with a clean and prepped face. I'm also using my own hair for this inspired look. Let's start off with a face primer. This will give us a smooth face that'll last all day and all night. Next, we're going in with beauty cream. Androids have realistic looking skin with pores and imperfections. So this will give us that skin-like look with evened out coverage. Just blend in with your fingers. Ugh, rude. Thank goodness for concealer. For this look, I chose a buildable concealer to erase blemishes and under eye circles. The coverage can deal with this bad boy, but also blends into the skin for natural finish. And for a seamless blend, I like to melt it all in with the warmth of my fingertips. Using a kabuki brush, pat over the face to get rid of any streaks or patches. Now it's time to lock down the base with a setting powder for a look that's long lasting. Are we human yet? Moving on to blush, I'm using a liquid nudie color for that undetectable look. You can also use this Glossier one under or over your powder products. Then just tap it right in. I've never used this shade before, but it is so nice. Next up, bronzer. Keep the color natural and not too warm. We want to give the face shape and dimension, so sweep it under the cheekbones, jawline, temples, forehead, and a bit under the nose tip if you like. For highlighter, we have a cream gloss you can tap on over a powdered face. Android skin is dewy and often wet looking, which makes this product a perfect choice. And this one doesn't even need setting. It'll stay where you put it all day. Brow time! Yep, I said it. Using a brow pomade, I'm filling in my brows the way I usually do. Most androids have very natural brows, which you could achieve with just a tinted brow gel. But I want to be glam with my OC android. I start by outlining the bottom, then the top, keeping the front soft. Then fill in and brush out any harsh lines. I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back and set them later. Time to prime the eyes for a nice base the shadows can stick to. Kind of like Connor and Hank, or I guess Kara and Alice, but you know, best boys. Let's start the eyes. Using a fluffy crease brush and a warm light brown shadow, blow out the transition shade from the deepest part of the crease towards the brow bone. Keep it soft and diffused, then take it under the eye to help with blending later on. Going into a warm, medium brown shade with a clean, fluffy brush, concentrate the color at the deepest part of the crease. Don't worry if it's messy or if it gets on the lid, that part will be covered with dark shadows later. Next, go back to the light brown shade with your first brush and blend the top edges. Switch in palette. Now, mix a medium brown shade with a black on a tapered crease brush. To protect from dark fallout, I'm holding a paper towel under my eye. Cheap, but effective. Then, place our mixture on the outer V, pulling the shadow into a small wing. Sweep whatever's left on your brush into the crease to connect and blend. And that's the structure done for our Chloe-inspired smoky eye. Next, take a sparkly, dark-hued shadow onto your finger and pack it onto the middle of your lid with press and pull motions. This will give you the highest pigment payoff. Same method once again, but this time with a medium sparkly tone. Pack it on the inner portion of the lid, but keeping the inner corner bare. Blend into the dark shade with light padding motions. Looking good, but we've got a ways to go before we can work at Cyber Life. On a flat shader brush, mix
mix the same black and brown shades and smudge them into your lower lash line. Go about three quarters of the way in and don't forget to connect to your outer V. On a clean flat shader brush, take the same dark sparkly shade and place it on the middle of your lower lash line, mirroring the top lid. Same goes for the medium sparkly shade. On a small dense blender brush, take the light brown shade from the beginning and smoke out the edges of the lower lash line. You can blend pretty low down with this. Time to clean it up and blend. Use a matte bone shade on a flat shadow brush and sweep under the brow bone and around the edges of the winged out shadow. This will help sharpen the shape and help with blending. Next, just blend over the edges with a fluffy brush. You'll see quickly that the edges really soften nicely. Finish off the shadow with a silver highlight shade on the inner corner. Next up, use a black pencil eyeliner to line your waterline. This was quite difficult for me because I have very watery eyes. Then just smudge it down to your lower lash line with a small brush. Hold on just a little while longer, these eyes are almost done. Now that the shadows are done, you may have some fallout to clean up. Just take a little, there we go, scotch tape. Stick it on your clothes to dull it down, then gently place it over any fallout and pat. Remove and marvel at no more fallout and an untouched base. Let's go back in with our black liner and tight line the upper lashes. This will tidy up our smoky eye and make our lashes appear fuller. Our eyes are so shimmery, so let's pop a bright highlight on our brow bone to balance it all out. Highlighter always makes me feel more human. Er, Android? Same diff, right? Next, give your lashes a good curl. And we're on to mascara. Choose an ultra black and super volumizing formula so your lashes pop against the smoky eye. I went in with two coats for even more volume. Get rid of any clumps with a disposable wand. Just comb through and separate. Then do the same to your lower lashes. I switch mascaras because this one doesn't smudge on my lower lash line. Because of my watery eyes, I'm reapplying liner to my waterline. Thank you, dry winter air. Clean up any mascara globs with a dry Q-tip. I think this eye look could start its own revolution. Thought I forgot about the brows? Never. Now that they are definitely dried down, I'm setting them down with some tinted brow gel. This one's a bit lighter than my natural hairs to give them a lot more texture. You could just wear this look as is, but nope, we are going full-blown Detroit. Using a white eyeshadow, start mapping out the outline of where you want your android skin to show through. Clean the inner area with a makeup wipe and reinforce any lost parts of your outline. Next, take a white foundation or face paint and fill in your outlined area. Keep the edges feathered and jagged, like the android face is digitally tearing through the human skin. Layer up where you need to to make it more opaque. Then set it down with the white eyeshadow. This will make the color even more stark and even. I detect a malfunction in my program, but I like it. Pick up a white shiny highlighter and apply it to your Android patch. This will give it that plastic high shine appearance. Next, pick a matte medium brown shade on a thin angled brush. Re-outline your patch, careful to stay outside the white. This makes the human skin appear to be peeling away. Then with a small brush, we're gonna start blending it out towards the skin, away from the white. Can you feel yourself starting to deviate? Go back in with a fluffy brush and continue blending just to match reference photos a little bit more. I'm then adding more highlights since it wasn't picking up on camera as it was in real life. Now the tricky part. Using a black liquid liner, draw a V-shape connecting the two sides at the top of your patch. 
From there, draw a vertical line all the way to the bottom of your patch. Take your time with this step and try to be neater than I was. Then, in the middle of the vertical line, draw a thin sideways trapezoid to mimic an android facial plate. I'm mixing light gray and silver shadows to shade the inner edge under the human skin and along the facial plates for more dimension. Try to choose shadows with a slight sheen to keep a plasticky look. Before we do Kara's blue bloody nose, let's line our lips. Choose a your lips but better shade and stay to your natural lip shape. Keep it soft but polished. Okay, let's do the fun part. So many colors. Using a shimmery bright turquoise shade and a dense brush, lay down the base color coming from the nostril and down onto the lips. Now we're really bleeding blue. It's okay if it's messy. We're going to blend out this base color so the next layer is like smeared into the skin. So pick up the same brush and dip into a cobalt shimmery blue shade and pack it over the turquoise to intensify and give more color depth. Blend harsh edges as you go and use a small brush to add in drippy details. Add as many layers as you like until you achieve your desired color. For a wet shine, I'm going back into my highlight palette and dusting on the teal shade onto the blue blood. I added even more blue to intensify the color. With the blue blood on, I wanted just a touch more highlight on the cupid's bow and cheekbones. I also wanted the lips to be a bit more glossy, so I added a sheer balm. Add some setting spray, and you are ready to prove you're more than just a machine. Have you never wondered who you really are? Whether you're just a machine executing a program or a living being capable of reason? I think the time has come for me to ask myself that question. It's time for me to decide. I am deviant.